Do you want trick-or-treaters or Halloween party-goers to be talking about their visit to your house for years to come? You're going to have to step up your jack-o'-lantern game from this to this or even something like this. To make a jack-o'-lantern that looks like this, actually better than this because I don't have a good low-light camera, you just need to perform three easy steps. Step one, prep it. Step two, mark it. Step three, carve it. Now let's get started. Shake your money maker. Oh, two hits. Yeah. Step one, prep it. Go buy a pumpkin. A pumpkin of one to one and a half times the diameter of a basketball works best for this kind of project. Okay, now that you have a pumpkin, you need to wash it. This helps get rid of any dirt that might be left on it. It also helps slow down decomposition by washing away or killing mold spores that might be left on the surface of the pumpkin. Dry the pumpkin thoroughly before you start carving. Step two, mark it. In this step, you're going to draw your pattern on the pumpkin. Before you do that, you'll have to figure out where on the pumpkin you're going to carve your face and what you're going to carve there. Most pumpkins grow lying on their side. This usually results in a flat spot. A flat spot like this normally makes the best place to carve. Even if it has an ugly part, you may carve it out or incorporate it into your design, as I'm going to do with this crease. Now that you know where you're going to carve, you need to decide what you're going to carve. I looked online and found this great zombie photo to use for this project. I printed out the photo of the zombie girl that I found online and then trimmed off all the excess paper. This will make it a lot easier to work with. Then I taped it to the flat spot on the pumpkin. If I had not cut off all that excess paper, I would have a lot of creases right now to deal with. At this point, we need to talk about the tools that you're going to use. I'm not going to use this gut scraper that came with the kit. I'm going to use one that I bought a few years back. I'm not sure where I got it, but they're uh, fairly widely available. This goes in, in a standard drill. This is the spur tool that I will use in the next step, and you use it to outline your pattern onto the pumpkin. There are also saws and a chipper scraper, which is what I do the majority of my work with. These are all very inexpensive and useful tools, but they break quickly. Now this is the first important part in the technique that I'm using for this project. I use the spur tool to outline all the places of differing shade in my reference picture. This will leave dotted lines on my pumpkin beneath that I can follow when carving. Once you're done with your reference picture, it should look something like this. And this is what the pumpkin should look like. It may be hard to see on your screen, but now I have dotted lines that outline all the parts of the zombie girl's face. And now I'm ready to start carving. And finally, the last step, step three, carve it. For this step, I'm going to use three tools. My butcher's knife, my drill with the gut scraper, and the chipper scraper from the carving kit. Depending on what you're going to do, you might want to use the saws from the carving kit as well on this project.
After the lid is cut out, it's time to remove the guts of the pumpkin. If you don't do this, the pumpkin will mold quite rapidly. I use this handy dandy drill attachment I call the gut scraper. Just run it over all the inner surfaces and it will make quick work of the guts. This is a lot faster than using a spoon or the little gut scraper tool in the kit. For the most part it doesn't harm the seeds so if you like roasting pumpkin seeds using this tool will not be a problem. As you can see here, there are hundreds of intact pumpkin seeds still left for anyone who loves to roast and season pumpkin seeds. I start with the chipper scraper tool. I carve out the lightest parts of the face first. Because the light source of your jack-o'-lantern shines through from the inside instead of reflecting from the outside, the deeper you carve, the lighter the part will be. This is the crux of this technique. Because of this, the nose, cheekbones, forehead, and chin are bones, forehead, the parts chin, that get carved the deepest. Are carved deepest. For the most part, if it sticks out part, off the real face, it, it gets carved real face, into it carved this kind of jack-o'-lantern jack -lantern jack space. Here I'm I am checking, checking to see how much, how much deeper, deeper I need to go. Need to go. My phone doesn't My show it near as bright as it actually is. From this, From I, this determine I determine I still, I still need, need to carve, carve a little deeper. deeper. Not quite bright enough. I spend about five minutes more carving deeper with my scraper chipper. Then I go back into the dark room and light up the pumpkin to see how, how far I've got. I determined then that I still needed to go a little further, so I gave it another five minutes or so. At that point, it looked like I'd found the good depth for the deepest parts and could start carving the rest of the face. This is where I start working on the rest of the face. I was able to get about 80% of it done before the battery warning stopped me from recording temporarily. This part took me about 15 minutes. Once I was finished with it, I just had a, a few small details left to do before the pumpkin was ready to display. This is what the jack-o'-lantern looks like all lit up. Once again, in person it looks much brighter and more detailed. She doesn't look near as good in the full daylight, but she still doesn't look too bad. Before the end of this video, I want to give you a little I advice on caring for your or new jack-o'-lantern. you might want to just take a picture. That'll make it easier for Number them to one, understand. if you can, don't carve your jack-o'-lantern more than three days prior to when it will be displayed. Pumpkins can last for many months, but as soon as you cut the skin, they will start to dry out and or mold. You should consider yourself lucky if you get more than a week out of yours, but spraying them down with Lysol will help. Here you see me spraying my new zombie girl jack-o'-lantern with Lysol to help stave off the mold. Even doing this is only postponing the inevitable. So don't put a lot of work into a jack-o'-lantern two weeks before Halloween. Chances are it won't make it. When you do this, be sure to get them both inside and out, all surfaces that don't have any skin on them, and if you find any small patches of mold, wipe them off. Here's a picture of the zombie girl pumpkin taken with a slightly better camera so you get an idea of what it looks like in real life. Hope you like it. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Good luck with your pumpkin carving and have a happy Halloween. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. This will help me continue to bring you videos and help me to improve the quality of my videos. Have a great day.